Recall from previous episodes that fossil records suggest meteorites brought water to Earth and cyanobacteria evolved from elements near hydrothermal vents in the ocean. The cyanobacteria began splitting water molecules, populating Earth with hydrogen and oxygen. Other single-cell organisms began to develop, also absorbing and breaking down energy from the environment. Fossil records indicate that about 2.5 billion years after the formation of Earth, some cells were engulfed by other cells, eventually developing into a nucleus within a cell. Decades of research indicate that a nucleus maintains the integrity of a cell's instructions, or DNA, and controls cell activities, allowing for more power and diversity, ultimately an effort to dissipate energy more efficiently. These cells began to gather, combine, and eventually created multicellular organisms. Intercellular channels, or gap junctions, between adjacent cells developed for direct diffusion of ions and small molecules. We believe this is the beginning of cells communicating and forming memory. Plants and animals capable of reproduction emerged. New abilities to sense and react to the environment arose. As many of these organisms reproduce, their offspring receives a combination of genetic information from the parents that tell its cells what to do. The selected genes are completely random, which seems to make sense considering the fundamental bits that make up the matter or information constantly move arbitrarily through space-time. Throughout life, genes modify as mutations or random changes in DNA are triggered by toxins, chemical substances, and radiation. These factors help diversify the reproduced organisms. We believe that life less fit for their environment tends to die off, while those that are more suited tend to live on and reproduce with environmentally preferred traits. Subscribe and stay tuned for Evolution Part 2 and ensure you click the like button if you enjoyed this episode.